England. And Rose. Ah, well, Rose, Rose is a bit silhouetted. We'll go outside. Hold on. It's better That's outside. Oh, that might not be for you. <laughs> oh, I can see you perfectly. Hello. That's amazing. Wow. Welcome. It's great to Hello. see you. Better half, Rose. <laughs> So, Good. So Joy. finally, with the wonders of modern technology, we've joined. I know. And we've been we've been probably 10 minutes on because when when I live stream, I, which I like to do if it works on Facebook because people have schedules. So I we I you have to get on a little early to kind of get it to stream in. And of course, then you weren't getting me, but it's all good now. Praise God. Where are you in England? Good. Southern England. Tell me exactly. I forget. We're in Southwest, so we're um, near, near the city of Bristol, which is just by the sort of best Bristol channel near the Welsh border. Okay, great. So, awesome. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow, this is so cool to go over the big pond to Mother England from here in the States. <laughs> great. Kudos to you. You guys have been going through a whole lot with the Queen and and the condolences on, on uh, Prince Prince's uh, his passing. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, thank 99 you. years old. <laughs> yeah. So, well, show us your birds. What do you have to show us there? You've got a lot. Well, of, like, okay. I, yeah. What I'll do is I'll have to turn the camera around. So you'll have okay. to tell me, Ralph, you can't see what's going on. Okay. So I'll do a little tour. Why Ro Rose is going to, by the way, prepare the owl food because we're going to fly the barn owl, the tawny owl, just across the main area here for you. Okay. So great. she'll do that while I'm doing a little quick tour. Okay. So here we have, can you see the pigeon? Yes, I see the pigeon, great. <laughs> so that's, this is, um, uh, <laughs> so we've got Pete and we've got um, Podge and Alfie here. Podge, Podge is the Alfie. dominant one at the back. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're fighting, you see. They're fighting for our attention. Yes, so I'll go course. away, otherwise they'll fight each other. So here's Lily, the bar now. Oh wow! And that's Lily. We're gonna fly Lily. We're gonna fly Lily in a moment. So okay. she's been waiting all morning. <laughs> she's uh, she, she's the one who was in the PBS Owl Power documentary. Oh, we really? filmed our hatch for that documentary. Yes, it's on PBS Nova. Okay. So I think you can still watch that if you if you haven't seen it. If you go on PBS Nova, yes. and, and and look up Owl Power, you will see oh, Lily. And her uh -huh. sister Luna, Luna, but Luna went wild, actually. So, she, but Lily didn't. So she's she'll be actually she'll be six years old this year, Lily. Six. So there wow. she is. Yeah. Then I'll go along. <laughs> and we've got Freya. You can hear calling. Can you see Freya? Yeah. So what is that? A falcon? Her. She's an Arctic jerfalcon. falcon. Oh. So wow. these are the guys you get across Alaska, um, and all the Arctic, high Arctic here in Greenland, Russia. Right. Iceland and right across to Alaska oh and northern Canada. Right. Um, so wow. yeah, so I'm trying to think how far not uh, my uh, my geography of the states. A lot of the states in America is not very good. So how you're, you're Michigan? How far north are you? Yes, we we are right. Midwest. Are you far, it, yeah. You're Midwest, right? Yeah. Okay. So do you get lots of snow? Well, oh yes, we do. Yes, this year was a little mild. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yep. Right, so here is Lottie, who's Rosie's pride and joy, her goshawk. Love it. Calling. Can you see her all right? That's a golden eagle, right? No, 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 she's a, she's the goshawk, a northern oh, goshawk. goshawk. Wow, she's beautiful. Yeah, which you, which oh, you really? probably get in the uh, in the forest and woods where you are there, I would imagine. Okay, uh, yeah, we get hawks, yeah. But she's calling at me because she's very territorial and aggressive to me because I'm the one she chases for the lure that she hunts me down and she's rosy first. Oh, she's beautiful. Here's little Henry. Henry. He's a little falcon, a little falcon called a hobby, which is a very small falcon that we get here in Europe. Oh, I really? don't think I don't think you get them in the States. I don't no. think you do. You might have some he's really tiny. So they catch dragonflies and insects. And swallows or house martins, those sort of size birds, but lots of lots of insects they would catch on the wing. I see. So he's lovely. So he's four years old. We've only had him since January. I see. Um, yeah. he, he was a friend of mine's up in the up in the bird of prey centre up in the north of England. Uh huh. And then we've got Reuben, a little kestrel. Kestrel. His little yeah. Reuben. Yeah. Yes. So they're on that they're on their day perches at the minute, and they all go up at night onto their night perches so they're safe from the fox, etc. Yeah. This is Ruben. He's he's a little 
So he's a bit bigger than your American Kestrel, probably. Okay. Um, and he's just out, coming up for a year old. Now, do you do you let is. them fly out of their uh, the cages every once in a while? Yeah, yeah, no, no, we take them. Yeah, no, they free fly. He free flies and hovers his lure beautifully. A bit flappy, so okay. No, so they all go out for their flying. Uh -huh. um, so the starlings are over there, but we're going to take them out after, so you'll okay. see them. Yeah. Um, let me go in here. What's so here the peregrine. So we've got the peregrines oh, here. Wow. So um, if Rudy will go up on his perch, he's going to be a bit flappy because they're not used to me coming poking a phone at me, you see. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's Rudy. So he's a peregrine falcon. Hey, Rudy. So Beautiful. Wow. There is another PBS documentary which was called Super Fast Falcon uh -huh. in the UK. I think, I can't think what it was called in on PBS. It might be. Um, I can't think it might, it might even be, but I think it might still be super fast forward. Anyway, uh -huh. there's another documentary on PBS Nova the way you see we filmed Rudy Hatch and all the stages he's learning to grow up, etc., and all he's flying. Yeah, so that's a really good documentary. Wow. Um, Noah's another peregrine over there. Uh, I see. know that so I saw Noah one of these on YouTube and that you were flying them and testing their speed. Yes, yeah. and, probably, and also we've done something with a relative. We used to have another peregrine called Moses, but he um, developed epilepsy, epilepsy, sadly, and he died when he was only four. Oh. Now, he was related to Rudy. Uh -huh. um, he was the one who chases the mountain biker on the Red Bull clip that's on YouTube. Um, wow. That was him. But Rudy is a really incredible. So Rudy is what you call a pills peregrine, P-E-A-L-E-S. Uh -huh. Which are the peregrines that you get down the United the coast of the US? I think they are east, um, they will be east coast United States, I do believe. Yeah, um, uh, but a friend of mine here in Europe in Belgium captive breeds them, so that's where Rudy Frank was from. Wow. Noah here, uh, Noah here is a Scottish peregrine, Scottish. so he's uh, yeah, that's what his uh, sort of genetics would be from. Uh -huh. And then Emily here is wet because she's had a massive bath. She's a female. You can see how much bigger the females are. So if yeah. I show her, wow. then I go back to Noah. You can see. Yes, very much bigger. Now, what and is then she doing in the background, wings, yeah, she'll be studying herself and drying her wings. <laughs> uh, and there's two of the geese <laughs> and a side of the rest. So yeah. you, if you've seen the clip of Sir David Attenborough with the geese flying with him, that, these are two of those geese. Yes, those are the same two. Yeah, two. We've got seven, but yep. at the minute everybody's split up because it's the breeding season. They all fight, so we have to split them up into different groups. Otherwise, you have lots of fighting. <laughs> uh, the same with the swans that you can see through there. We've got three of the three wow. of the swans in there. One's the other side of the net in, and we've had to put another one in inside. Otherwise, they call so much you wouldn't be able to hear anything we were saying. So, because <laughs> they're all fighting at the minute. And here's so are Sasha. they breeding too now, the swans? Look at that. They will be trying to start soon, anytime soon. Is so here's chilling? Sasha. No, this is Sasha. He's an Indian tawny eagle. Um, and he, he is 31 years old. Oh, my goodness. And I've I'm had him it? since he was 10, yeah, uh, 10 days old. So he's a tawny eagle, an Indian tawny eagle. Oh, really? I've never heard of him. Yeah. No, so you get them all across Africa. You get an African um, version and you get the Indian version. So here's the Indian one. You get them all over India and Pakistan. Wow. Um, but I've had him since he was a ball of fluff. So I've had him over half my life now. Wow. <laughs> he's a real old character. Wow. He's lovely. And then if I, I'll go over to Tilly. Can you see, can you see all right, by the oh, way? Oh, yeah. It, it keeps I'm... splitting, but I'd rather have it on you all the time. But it mostly is on you. But it's doing good right yeah. now. You're coming in good. Okay, let's go to Tilly. Okay. I just didn't know because sometimes when it's sunny, the contrast is not good, is it? But yep. uh, so here's Tilly. Hey, Tilly. Can you see all of her? Uh, yes, is that all I right? Do. She's beautiful. Well, here she is. So you can see. I mean, you probably don't get such a sense of scale on the camera, but uh, yep. if I put my hand in, you can see how much oh, my bigger goodness, she is. Yes. So, is she so bigger Tilly, than the other eagle you just showed us? She's two and a half times bigger. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it does. She's two and a half his weight. Wow. So she weighs, um, and now do you do pounds or kilos? Pounds. What do you work in? Pounds, pounds, same as us. So, well, we should do kilos, but we don't. I'm old fashioned, I do the pounds. So she's just about coming up for nine pounds. Wow. But Sasha's only three and a half. So oh you can goodness. see the size difference. So Tilly's 21. 
Yeah. And she's the one, obviously, you, you, you saw in Eagle Power on PBS. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yes. Now, do they get oh, along? Do you ever have the two of those Eagles together? Or what's their relationship um, like? Well, no, because Telly's completely bonded with me yeah. for life. So yeah. is Sasha. So actually, they'd be very jealous of one another. I and Tilly would, would probably uh, eat Sasha, given any opportunity. Oh, my goodness, think. really? Wow. Oh, yes. She would have him for a snack. Whereas <laughs> Sasha, actually, is quite good with all the other birds. She's very non-aggressive. Yep. The only person Sasha gets jealous of is Rose. So in the breeding <laughs> season, Rose has to hide in the shed. Otherwise, Sasha will die for her and try and drive her off at what he sees as our mine and his territory. You're kidding. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> no. That is so wild. <laughs> because Rose and I have been married. Or let me put it on back. We've been married, what, 24 years coming you up this year. that right. <laughs> Yeah, 24 coming up. Remember, I've had him for 31 years. So I, and I knew Rose, one, two, three, about five years before we got married, six years. So I had Sasha for a couple of years, just me and him. Right. So suddenly you can imagine, yeah. suddenly Rose appears. He was like, well, what's going on here? <laughs> I love it. And the people think, I, I love I get this <laughs> old myth, and you busted the life right out of it. But, you know, what people will call other people that don't have a lot of wit having a bird brain like bird brains are birds are dumb but they are not no no, no, no. <laughs> they're the complete opposite and that's changing all the time yeah we're learning so much more now about yeah. all animal intelligence particularly yeah. birds so here's tills again look hey, you can going. see i'll try and show you her lovely golden crown if i turn yeah. around the back of her okay that's why they're called a golden eagle oh, because that beautiful neck feathers there yes so she's coming up she's in full breeding condition condition at the minute so i have to be uh, more respectful and uh, careful around her perch here than i usually would yeah. because yeah. all her hormones are going for breeding uh -huh. at this time of year the female eagle would only invite the male to what she perceives as her little space if she wants them to be there yeah so i just have to read her very well because sometimes she's like I'm, I'm not ready for you to come now so you can't <laughs> <laughs> I got and that's only one. in the spring <laughs> <laughs> look at her she just loves you oh my gosh she does you can see she's been all friendly see her lovely long legs yeah she's got a toy she, she, oh she's gonna grab her ball you ready oh, 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 she's trying to grab that toy oh my god that toy oh. yeah she likes she, she likes various dog toys she's got a little uh <laughs> yellow donut thing here yeah. and wow. all sorts that she plays with they all have but a you can see her huge feet. Yeah, so you get an idea of her feet. Look, there's my hand. Yeah, wow. And there's her feet. Yeah. So you see how long that hind talon is? Yeah. That one there. Wow. That's huge. That is as big as your finger, twice so that's, as long a talon. Wow. You can wow. see what they do all the damage with when they catch their prey. It's those exactly. two talons there. Yeah. So wow. she has as much power in those feet as a large dog was having its jaw, and she can lock it. So wow. that you can't, you know, you can't get her to let go if he doesn't want to. Yeah. He's trying to so eat there's it. Tills. Uh, one of the other swans is out there. You can yeah. see look, He's had to be on his own because he wants to fight with one of the ones currently in there. So. Oh my goodness. Oh, <laughs> it's wow. like a game of chess at the minute in the mornings. Yeah. Animal third chess, getting everybody in the right place for the day, and it uh -huh. lasts till about June, and then they're all okay with each other for the rest of the year till next April yeah, or that. the end of next March. Uh -huh. I'll show wow. you our little pond. Okay. Um, Great. Just going through. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I've got I've, I've, everything's tied up to stop swans from getting to one another. We have like these airlock areas where they can't get to each other, you see. These guys are so busy, Lloyd. Wow, with all the different aspects yeah, and behaviors. It is. And, yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen swans fight, but actually, when they fight, they sort of lock together and they crack their wings at each other. It's very, oh, very good. aggressive. So, oh, here he comes. So, this is. Here's what, hello, mate. He's <laughs> lovely. What big Hello. Feet. Wow. So, yeah, so he's displaying to me. What he's yeah. doing here is coming up. So he's displaying to me. Yeah, yeah. And being friendly to me. Showing off. So he's yeah. lovely. So he's 16. 16, 16 wow. years old. Yeah. Uh -huh. There he goes. Yeah. <laughs> and there's, oh, you can see the goose there. Now that's a wild Canada goose. Okay. And their nest is just over on that island behind that tree. I see. So his right. mate is currently incubating eggs. Oh. But they're very used to us because we feed them. So they come sure. every year. Yeah. And they breed. And when their goslings get big enough, they go through the reed bed back to the river. And ah. then we don't see them again till the following December and they come back to nest again on the island here. Isn't that <laughs> wow. Gosh. And you can see the pond. You see yes. it's got a lovely little pond. 
What's up? What's the temperature the other right now? That... In England. Well, for here, yeah. Oh well, for here you would say it's a bit cold, but yeah. for you guys, I don't know what it's, it's about. Eleven today, degrees Celsius, which yeah. is Fahrenheit. I don't know what that would be, but that's it's. A, we had a frost last night. Put that oh, way. I see. Yeah. Um, so it's a bit cold for April, yeah. but we don't get much cold weather here. We rarely ever get snow. I Very, see. We never had. We have. We never had any snow this winter at all. Yeah. Wow. Well, we're at about um, forty-eight degrees. There's the. Yeah. Ah, uh, you how much what is that? About 48 degrees Fahrenheit, so probably 15. Uh, so I think we're about probably what is uh, I think we're probably about 58 currently. Okay. There's the other geese, look, they're oh, all just you. resting. <laughs> yeah. So these five are okay, but we uh -huh. had to separate the other two off just for the summer now. Yeah. And then let's go round round here. <laughs> we'll find rows in a minute. How many acres we'll do you have there, Lloyd? It is not, uh, well, it's only about uh, one, two, yep. with a little wood, yep. but we've got permission to go on all the farmland behind immediately. Wow. So we're very lucky in that we've got permission to go on hundreds of acres of land immediately behind us, mm. which is great. Yeah. We're very fortunate. It's, yeah. it's Hector. We're going to fly in a moment. He's the tawny owl. Oh, wow. He's there. What kind of owl again? So he's Say. tawny, tawny owl, tawny, which yeah. I don't think you get those. Uh, I think what, I don't know what a, a similar owl in the US would be maybe mm -hmm. a barred owl, but a barred owl would be bigger. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's one of the other pigeons. Uh, and there's Smudge. Now, Smudge down here is making a little scrape for a nest. She's nearly 19 years old. Wow. Wow. They live long. <laughs> so she's a really old pigeon. Yeah. Um, um, I've got an old crow in here who's 26. Oh, oh, 26. He's blind. He can't see. Oh. He, he, can hardly, he can't fly. He can hardly walk. Oh. Um, but he, go, he comes down in his aviary for the day yeah. and then he goes up in the house in his night box yeah. so he's safe um, but he hasn't been able to see now for probably about he's been blind for over a year so it's really old for a crow 26. But, he, but he has a quality of life though still right um, yeah yeah he knows where his water bowl is he knows where his little stump is he knows where I put his food he can have his bath do what he wants and then he goes up the house we, we didn't think he'd make it past two winters ago but he's still going strong yeah, wow well. Can I ask you this question, Lloyd, real quick? Um, yeah. In terms of, because I'm thinking of having to have euthanized my dog last summer of 15 years, my old lab. But with birds, is it different? Do you let them pass on uh, organically on their own? Or do you find that sometimes at quality of life, you, you may have to put them down? How does it work with birds? Well, luckily, we're lucky like that. Yeah. In the fact that usually with most birds, Unless they've got an illness or something, yeah. uh, or something diagnosed wrong with them, they generally go of their own accord through old age. That's good. Yeah, I'd imagine that would be the case with Zimba. Yeah. Um, I bet you one morning will come down, he would have gone in the night, almost certainly. Yeah. Um, but if we, th but it's like anything, if you start to think he's struggling to find where his food and his water is, right. then you'd have to take him to the vet yeah. and have him put down, you know. Yeah. Uh, but luckily, we don't have to do that. Usually, they, they live long lives and they yeah. usually go through old age. Oh Not always, God. like with Moses with his with his fitting. And we had a lovely other tawny owl who sadly got cancer in their oh. in their hip and we had to have them put down because right. they were in a lot of pain. Yeah. So, but you know, it's usually if you look after them, yep. you give them a good quality of life, they live yeah. a long time. Yeah. So Bran is down here, the raven. Okay. But we'll oh. get Bran out, we'll get Bran out in a minute. There's Bran. Wow, he's big. Him. So we'll get him out in a little while. So okay. Rosie's, uh, Rosie's up here. Let me show you a little shed and I'll show you about okay. where we weigh the birds, etc. Yeah. <laughs> now imagine, Floyd, that you you have such a big heart, you and Rose both, that when you lose one of them, you you must shed a few tears, I'm sure. Yes, no, certainly, because they're like part they're, they are our family. Yes. Um we did, I don't know, when did I last speak to you? When was that? When did we do that? Was that about uh, think, a year ago? Yeah, yeah, about a year ago, yeah. Well, we had a beautiful goshawk called Mabel, who's related to Lottie, who was my goshawk. Ellie Rosie's lovely old goshawk died of old age, November year ago. She was nearly 18. Uh -huh. And then Rose got Lottie last year. I, I had Mabel and she was amazing. Uh -huh. And I really connected with her. But sadly, um, she got a kidney infection and she died very suddenly last November. To be wow. honest, that was a huge for me. Mm. I had a really good connection with her. Yeah. Sometimes you get a bird and they're just very special. They're all special, yeah. but there's just yeah. something about them. Some of them, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, and that was, um, but you know, there was nothing you could do. You couldn't change it. We tried for the best vet care. It wasn't to be. Right. But yeah, of course, it's really upsetting. Yeah, like it, it could is. be for anybody who's attached to any animal. Any animal. But, so yep. here's our little shed. So we've got all the birds' weight names and oh their weights up that. here. <laughs> oh, there's your Zoom code I was jotting down quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Don't erase there we that. <laughs> <laughs> and there, there is. Um, uh, the scows. Now, what we do is the, we get them every day with the birds of prey, all the bigger birds, including yep. the falcons. You put the bird on there, uh -huh. and you put the weights on there, and then you oh. can weigh them. Oh wow, that's really interesting. Or for the smaller ones, we've got the little digital scows. Oh my goodness, that yeah. wow! You see, yep. and that's really important to weigh yep. them most days, nearly every day, because then you get a good idea of what's a good flying weight for them, a healthy, strong flying weight. And if you're going to get something wrong with a bird, right. usually the first indication is the weight starts to drop away on their normal amount of food. It, and you know like straight food. away. Right. right. Yeah, especially with the little birds, yeah. the small ones, like the small falcons, yeah. or the starlings particularly. You know, if they've picked up any parasites from eating earthworms, right. straight away you'll know because the, their weight will start to struggle to hold when yeah. it usually should. Wow. And let me say this. It must not be because the weight is a lot smaller than ours as a human. You must have to really pay attention, even the ounces of dropping, right? Of, if it's yes. dropping down, that it's significant, not necessarily all oh, that's just an ounce from yesterday. It must be important to watch that. What would look yeah, because they've got small would be big to them. They've got a very fast metabolism, a lot of the birds. Yeah. So yeah, they can fluctuate quite quickly. It, hmm. Obviously, it varies with the temperature, right. but as you get to know them, you hmm. get to know. What they might, what food they might need to hold away in the winter to the summer or when they're molting. Yep. Uh, but with the small birds, the really small ones, we weigh them in grams, like the mm. starlings, because they only weigh about three or well, 70 grams is what, three ounces, they're just about. So wow. you, you do them in grams because you get a more accurate drop and gain mm -hmm. in grams, if you see. Wow. So that's good. Um, so, Rose, now what we're going to do, if you want, who do you want to fly first, Rose? Well, shall we fly um, Hector, the Tony We're going to fly Hector, the Tony out. <laughs> so, so oh, where should I go, Rose? Out here. So, I'm going to go out. We'll just fly him on the little main area here. Okay. We've got a little, we've got a little, a one acre of little, almost like a tiny little bit of woodland just up, but we, we don't go up there in the middle of the day. Yep. Because um, generally, he's a bit more sleepy and spooky areas. So. Uh -huh. Let me see. Rose will. Oh, uh, yeah. Rose will call you right past the camera. Oh, he's coming already, Rose. Oh, look. There he is. Oh, sorry. Going after. Oh, wow. I'll go back. I'll go over here. And Rose will call you right past the camera. Look at that. Okay. Wow. You get ready. He's looking around because it's the middle of the day. Is and he wouldn't be. Use... Wow. Oh, uh, no. That's Lottie. He's hex. Here he comes. Woo, woo. Wow, what a great shot. What a great shot, Lloyd. We'll do, Thank you. We'll do that again. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Rem remember, he would usually be sound asleep at this time of day, so it's a bit unusual for him. It's one yeah. it's the middle of the day here. Because he's an owl. Oh, right? yeah. There he is. Yeah. Yeah. Right on your head. Oh, love it. Wow. What's Especially his name? Tony Owls. Hector. Uh, Hector. Yep. Tony, Tony owls are very nocturnal, probably like barred owls probably are. There were you, yeah. are they not? Right. Very nocturnal. Yeah. Wow. So, there he goes. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> show how he goes now, we'll show you how he goes through a gap. Which one do you want to do? This is what Tony owls are really good at. Okay. As you can see, Hector. you'll see him come through. He, or he thinks he's got something. Come to his name. Oh. Catch there he goes. You see how he goes through the tree. Yeah, they can go through tiny little gaps. Yeah. Rose will do it again, and I'll get you more face on for him. We'll get one. Let's go. There's a nice V there, Rose. He's got to come straight through. There we are. Hey, good luck. Oh, <laughs> he's lovely. Yeah, yeah, he's a real sweetie. He's got um, he's got a bit of cut up mouse today, so. Oh. <laughs> We buy all our food frozen, and we've got a big chest freezer in the garage, and we we um, defrost it every day. Yeah. So here we are. He's going to come right through here. Here he comes. Oh, he's, he's looking. Let's see if, here he comes. Woo! Rose, <laughs> oh, so I finish him up because he's been very good, to be honest, because he usually would be sound asleep. 
Exactly. Is that the other one? But well, let's see. Yeah, more. in the background, that'd be Lily. Yeah. So there's Hector. So Rosa put Hector yeah. back here. There he goes. And he's so open and then, to what? You're back here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and remember, because the day length is getting longer here now, because it's the spring. Right. In the winter, the owls might be more active a bit in the day, but at this time of year, it would be very odd for a tawny owl to be awake usually at sort of middle right. at lunchtime. So he's and been what, a good boy. What time is it for you right now? About one? Uh, I think. I look, it's half past one in the okay. afternoon, so just after lunchtime. Yep. So, Rose has got Lily, Hello. who's very keen and hungry. She's a bit more willing to be active in the day, because yes. barn owls will be active in the day. Now, you get, you get barn owls, don't you? Yes, we I do. do believe. Yes, yeah. we do. Yeah. Okay, so, what do you want to try? Well, I so, ah, so. I don't, they're, they're barn owls, the thing that they're really good at is locating where, any, where a sound is coming from without even needing to be able to see. They can just use their ears to locate the exact position of a sound. Oh, really? So wow. we've, we've got a little beeper, a little sounder box that's remote controlled. Where is it, Rose? It's, head. it's over there. And she's just pounced on it because she's heard it. So we'll do it again. <laughs> so Rose in her hand, if you show Rose, has got the remote control. Okay. And right now she's just getting a piece of food off it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Rose. That's you cool. can move it if you want, Rose. So Rose will move it to a new spot. We'll try not to put it in the stingy nettles for her. Uh -huh. But you, you see people get her for Yeah. I'm just trying to distract Lily so she can't cheat. <laughs> She's down on the ground at the minute. There she is. You can probably see her. Yes, yes, I see her. Okay, then we'll go back over here. What I'll do is I'll stand and... So Rose will press the button. We won't be able to hear it, but she right, will. She, she's got Lily on her, on her shoulder. Yeah, there okay. she goes. Look at that. Wow. There she'll pay up. There. I found the treat. <laughs> yeah, she can. So we put a little treat on the beeper. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're only doing it here. Usually we go more up in the long grass over in the meadows. Yep. So she'll hover and then pounce. So. The reason she can do that is because most of the time, most of their prey is hidden from you down in yeah. the long grass because it'll be small voles of mice. Right. So they've evolved this amazing hearing to be able to locate their prey. Yes. Yeah, and the other owl that's very good at that is the great grey owl, which you get in the US there that catch the, uh, the, the, the rodents through the snow. You've probably yeah. seen that. You know, the, that, They're the other owl that's very good at doing that. Wow. There she is. She, Rose is always kissing a lot. She's lovely. Really. <laughs> she likes she's lovely. that. <laughs> she tries to raise the food but pot. she's trying to raise the food pot. She's very clever for an owl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> trying to get you to get more. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll she's do trick. she's I'll been do waiting all morning trick. for her food, and she loves her food, Lily. So she's been waiting <laughs> and waiting. She's yeah, let's see if Rose Rose can get her up there. And as you're flying, no, she's going to go on the ground. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, Rose. I'll go right near the beeper. I'm going to go right near the beeper. Okay. That's okay. Don't worry. Where? Uh, no, I've got to find it. Yeah, but now it's in my pocket. Ah, it's all right. It's all right. Rose has got it in the pocket. I can, no wonder I couldn't see it. Usually I can't find it unless she beats it. So, what I'll try and do is I'm going to try and hold the camera above it so you get a little view of her coming in. Can you see that? You'll be looking at the sky at the minute. Yes, okay, I Rose. See the sky. If, if Rose beeps, Yes. Oh no! Uh, oh no! I, I was in her way, unfortunately. I was in her way. <laughs> yeah, but she, you got a great shot of her. Look at that! Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> There's no food on it. There's no food. She needs a little reward. <laughs> She's upset. You can see. The track. Yeah. Yeah, let's go up the track a little bit. Yeah. And we might be able to get a better little pounce if we go up where they're slightly longer grass. She seems okay. The reason we didn't wasn't going to try that because I said it's the middle of the day, but she seems quite yeah. well awake, so we'll give it a go. The worst thing that will happen is she'll go back to the shed or her aviary. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So if I really, so I'm going to try and keep up. Ah, she's gone back. There she goes. Look, she can go back down to the shed. She'll come back. So I'll keep watching for when she comes back. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see if she comes. <laughs> I'm just waiting. Here she comes. Right. Here she comes. So I'll turn the camera around so you can see. 
So she's got a longer distance now. Yeah, you get that. She's yeah. landing by me at the minute. I'll keep the camera where it is. Here she okay. goes. Look at that. There wow. she is. You got it. And she's in the longer grass. When it's more, <laughs> she's cheating. When it's more windy, yeah. she hovers beautifully. Yeah, but there's yeah. no wind at all today, so she can't be bothered. She's being lazy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> so Rose will walk her back. You'll see her go to Rose. She really is a, a magnificent owl. She's done so much filming for different natural history documentaries in, the, in nearly six years now, you know. Um, because it's quite unusual, the fact that she flies to the sound of box. Most captive barn owls don't do that. They just use their sight to fly to the whoever keeps them. So the fact that she does what she does, using her natural instincts to use her ears, is quite unusual mm -hmm. for a captive bird. Yeah. And that's why Luna, her sister, went wild. Because I saw, I taught her so well yep. how to use her hearing. She just started to catch wild prey. Yep. And in the first autumn, decided that she didn't need me anymore. <laughs> and went oh wild. Wow. Yeah. And she made it. We saw, I saw her a year after. Did you? Um, she went. Yeah. Wow. And she was good... doing really well. There's the pigeons again. Yeah. So, what we've got one more lot of birds. What are we going to do now? Oh, no, no, no. Are you going to do oh I'm going to do the raven. Yeah, I forgot about Fran. Um, Don't forget the raven. Hold on. Um, yeah, Rose, can you do the camera? Yeah. There we are. So I'll give camera. So you've got to point it. Okay. That's it. Away from yourself. I'll just get my stuff uh -huh. ready. Uh -huh. Cool. Ralph, uh, I'll tell you. You can kind of. It's pretty wide angle, isn't it, the camera? So you should be able to see okay. Oh, yeah, I see the geese. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can see. Good. Um, walk way in okay, so Bren's keen to come out. Let's get him out. Can you see all right? Yeah? Yes, I can. There he is. Okay, Bren. So here's right Bren. You. <laughs> there he is. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll watch you don't take me little earpiece out because he will. <laughs> Now, Does she do that? I've got oh some. My oh, yeah, oh, no, you, you'll know that something. Oh, you said, What is that in your ear? I'll have that. We're ah. going to hide it somewhere and we'll have no mic. Yeah. <laughs> there and you're, he giving, is. you're giving so, him what kind of food now? He had, he had a big piece of quail there. Quail? Um, <laughs> he's going he's to raid me. Oh, 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 he's going to raid the food. He's a devil. I've had it. I oh, know he's got it. <laughs> um, there's a documentary going to be on PBS soon. Okay. Called, I think it's going to be called Animal uh, Animal Einsteins. Uh -huh. It's about animal intelligence. And Bran is a big part. He's done a, quite a lot in the series and the Starlings on the really... first program. Uh -huh. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now, if I can get away with this, I've got kids opening the door. something here that he likes. It's his, I won't say the word because he knows it. Wait, oh, no, really? stop it. It's, it's his S-T-O-N-E. See? Oh my if word. I can manage to put this somewhere without him seeing, he likes he'll find it when I say the word. So let's go over this way. Okay. Yeah, he, this is his special little S-T-O-N-E. <laughs> the trouble is, he's on my arm, and my chances of hiding it without him realising are pretty slim, but we'll give it a go. I'll put it down here. Mm -mm. <laughs> ah, ah. Okay, Brian. I said, where's your stone? Where's your stone? Where's your stone? <laughs> Brad, where's your stone? Where is it? Where's your stone? He's looking. There we are. He's got it. Oh, <laughs> He's got it. Yay, he it <laughs> <laughs> wow. So I have to give him a little reward now. Here yes, of course. <laughs> There's a good lad. So he is amazing. He's he a is. really incredible. So he's coming up to 12. Yeah. Um, 12 years old. He's, he's done lots of filming. Dra dramas, you know, stuff for different dramas and uh -huh. wow, documentaries, stuff with David Atty. Good. I lost you. Can you still see me? All right, yeah. No, I lost you for a minute. Oh, well, let me guess. It's because someone's trying to ring, and I just decline it, and then it will be sure. all right. No problem. You should have got. You should. There we go. We're good. Now look at him. Now look. I'm wow. going to let him raid me. Can you see what he's doing? Yeah. He's getting all the food out of the pouch because he knows how to undo the zip. He can what he can. He's a devil. So now I'll say to him, watch this, under your door. Brent, uh, no, don't raid me. Come on. He's a, look, oh, that's all he wants to do. Uh, Brent, under your door. Let me under your door. Good lad. Under your door. And again, uh, Brent. Come on, under your door. Come on. 
Can you let yourself in? That's it. Good lad. <laughs> I'll put him in. I'm getting raided. I'm getting raided. There we are. There you go. Oh, I love it. Wow. There we are. They're both oh, smart, yeah. smarter than a dog. Right. <laughs> he is. I mean, a raven's uh, near enough the most all round intelligent bird on the planet. <laughs> certain other birds are more intelligent, certain problem, problem solving, like Kias that you get in New Zealand or um, Caledonian crows in New Caledonia, tall oh. use. But, you know, nothing really beats a raven uh -huh. when it comes to... Do you get lots of ravens where you are? Yeah, somewhat in Michigan. In Maine, back in Maine, we had a lot of ravens. Yes. A lot of crows. Oh, you did? Yes. So do you get them at certain times of the year or all the time? It seems to be certain times of the year. And I know I don't think they hibernate, do they? I mean, not hibernate, but uh, no. out. Uh, no, they, the, the only reason they would do here is when you get the, um, in the Arctic, when you get the constant darkness for that period, they might go a bit south, but only because they have to, because of lack of daylight. Otherwise, yeah. they can stand really extreme cold. Yeah. yeah. Um, wow. And heat, obviously. Uh -huh. They're one of the only birds, that, if they're one of the only birds that can actually eat frozen food if they have to. Really? And it doesn't do them any harm. Yeah, so they can survive on eating bits of frozen carrion wow. or, or all sorts of stuff. So now we're going to go up to the starlings. Okay, good. So we've got them up in a little, we've got a little special area that we sit with them so we take them out to Avery. Now, where they're they, safe from the what? Are, are, the starlings the little starlings. The that, are they the ones that sing with you when you play the piano? Correct, you got it, yes. And Rose has had these little guys. We've got three that we've bred that are three years old and the other three are 13 years old. Uh -huh. Um. And they mimic and talk and do all sorts of filming. Um, they've done so many different. They're probably our most versatile bird, even more so than the raven. The really? Film. Wow. I would say. Yeah, they're incredible. Mm -hmm. We did a big uh, job with them on a the weekend for a big fashion label that will come out in June. So that was a very interesting thing to do. But of course, I'm not allowed to say about it until it comes out. But yeah, right. I'll let you know. Yes, people are about do. to view it online when it's yes. yeah. Yes. Um, so we're going up there. This is our little woodlands. Oh, we've cool. got a little woodland in here, uh -huh. about one acre, and then we come up here because it's a nice place to sit with them, but yeah. we have to be careful because we have a wild sparrowhawk, which is probably a bit like your, is it, you get sharp shinned hawks? I've never heard little, of them, no. Little, uh, Cooper's hawks, do you get yes. where you are? Yeah. Yeah. Imagine like a, a very small Cooper's hawk, about the size of American Kestrel. Uh -huh. We get them here at the Berkel the Sparrowhawk, and we've got wild ones here. And they would eat our starlings given any opportunity. So, right. so we're in this them. little mesh. So they're safe in here, you see? Yes, yes. yes. They don't live in here on top, but we come up here and sit with them. So you can spend time outside their aviary, <laughs> but they don't get nobbled by the wild sparrowhawk. Right. <laughs> we do fly them outside too. for filming. Yeah, but we have to be very careful where we live here because we've got a very active sparrowhawk mm -hmm. who's not scared of us because they're used to us. Yep. So those is... They're all in their little travel boxes. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, they're all coming out. Look at them. Starlings, wow. <laughs> so the reason they're in separate is they fight for, for, the, for the perch base if oh, they're really? together. Wow. In, in a, these are their roost boxes. So at night, they go up the house and they sit next to the piano in their night boxes, each one of them. <laughs> uh, and they listen to it. They sit there with us. They listen to the TV and all sorts of... Oh, my well, here they are. You can see them all going around. Wow. Oh, I see if I can see, if I put some in my hand, they might probe my Ah, uh, yeah, so Rosa put some food in her hand, uh -huh. and you'll see. Oh, my <laughs> goodness, look at that, they're hungry. <laughs> I can see them all going, not for the mealworms. Yeah, mealworms. I don't know if you can quite see, but what they're really good at is they're good at opening their bill like that. Can oh. you see what he's doing? Yeah. He's you see him opening his bill? They've got... Yes, I do. So yeah. starlings have more power when they open their little beaks. Than when wow. they close them, which is the opposite of most birds. Yeah, really. Wow. And that's because when they feed on the grassland, they put their bill into their little beak into the ground and they open it like that. And then they can look down to see if there's a worm or something there. You right. See. Wow. It's like prying, right? Like but prying. we have we have yeah, that's it. Yeah. So we have fake grass in here because we yep. don't like them eating earthworms and things, because earthworms that are loaded with parasites. Oh. <laughs> 
Wow. And so it's not good for them. We end up, oh, well, he's got a bit of a thing caught in there. Isn't it? And he has to end up worming them. So we have them on the fake grass where they can still walk about, pick amongst it, but they can't <laughs> eat anything we don't want them to. Right. <laughs> wow. You really have to think through so much of this. Wow. Well, the wild birds are probably build up almost more of a tolerance of living with the parasites. But it's different for our guys because they're not wild. And also, you know, it, it just doesn't do them good to constantly go around and you constantly got a worm all the time. So right. we're, we're um, very, very particular how we look after them. Wow. Here they are. Oh, that bit's coming off air lot, right? I'll get rid of that. Bit of the fake grass all stretching off. <laughs> there we are. Where are they gone? Uh, on the three up there. You can three see three up there. Yeah. Four up, four up there. One on my shoulder. <laughs> oh, look at him. Who have we got here? Oh, we've got Arnie. This is Arnie. Arnie. Oh, Arnie. So you talk. know them by their what's the distinguishing yeah, yeah. factors that yeah, so, uh, you might talk if we listen. Arnie, hello. What do you say? Arnie. Hello. Hello. What do you say? He, he usually chats, but yeah. he's been quiet. He's been there he goes. So you got Arnie there. We've got uh -huh. Wilf. Will. That's Wilf. And she's a female. Look at her. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll try to show you. Difference. Yeah, you so, can see it from there. There's Ernie in the middle, who's a male. Yeah. That's Ruby, who's a male. But if I can show you Wilf, if she yeah. let me, hard, because she keeps moving around. I think she wonders why I'm poking the phone at her. Um, <laughs> How? I don't know if you can see her spotting on her front. Yeah, her spotting, her little spots are very rounded. Yep. Whereas if you look at Ernie to the there, yeah, he's a very pointed. Less, yeah. Like arrow. Yeah, and oh. pointed. So they're little arrows. So the males have little arrow shaped spot, the spotting, and the females are more blotchy. Blotchy, yeah. And that's how you tell uh, males from females. So, but also that, these are slightly. Well, besides that, how yeah. do you distinguish to have names and know that you got the right one? Their character. Yes, so their characters are, are as different as Human. any any person. Yeah, yeah. anyone. Wow. So Arnie here is the real character. He's the one who chats and cheeky. Um, <laughs> there we are. You can, I can hear him. What are you saying, Arnie? You talk. I'll take the microphone down here and he might speak. Okay. Arnie. Yeah, Arnie. Oh, he is, but you probably can't hear him. He, he says hello in all sorts. Isn't he, Arnie? What do you say? Can you hear him then in the background? I heard something. Arnie. Yeah. Arnie, what do you say? Arnie. Do you say no? He's not talking. He's not talking. <laughs> yeah. I know. Oh yeah, and if he gets the food, there we are. Listen, I'll hold the mic near him. Something. Say on. <laughs> you could probably hear him. Then he was just—he was making odd sounds. They going, oh, like that. he was going. <laughs> they say all sorts of things. Yeah. So that's a little yellow pot. That's a little mealworm pot. Wow. You see, and they know. Look at look they at Ray. The they know what's in that. <laughs> look at them going crazy. <laughs> wow. So they are incredible little birds. I yes, we absolutely are. love them. Oh, a lot of power. Love, we absolutely cool. love them. But they're so uh, versatile and choreographable. Uh -huh. So what we were doing on the weekend with them was so. When you see it, you realise uh, it's a rid. They had to do something very, very specific in a very unusual place. Uh -huh. With a crew of about a hundred people, wow. so and they are just so good. We just know. Yeah. Rose Rose knows them so well. If you see what I mean. Yeah. So when we first got them, they were originally going to be for a movie, but they had to cut their budget to make it in the end, so they couldn't include the starlings in the oh. scene. So Rose was Rose spent a whole year with them wow. every day. Uh, that's why they're as good as they are, the older ones. And then we okay. teach with Brett the younger three, and they oh. pick up from the, they learn from the older ones. So can you see how they... one's being dominant? That one can you see there, look. Yeah. Who yeah. is that, Rose? That's Arthur. So Arthur is boss. So Arthur is making all the others. He's holding the main position. Yeah. <laughs> King of the mountain. Yeah. We say Ruby, but actually we didn't. You don't know if they're male or female when they're babies. So Ruby yeah. is actually a he. Uh -huh. And Wilf is a she. <laughs> I love it. Now, uh, Lloyd, are they the kind of birds, uh, the starlings that make all those beautiful patterns in the sky when they're flying? Yes, the murmurations, exactly. So the, the term for it, exactly right. Uh -huh. That's exactly what they do. And I don't know, you probably get them there in where you are. Do you get lots of starlings in Michigan? We, yes, we do. No, uh, up north, I think more than down south, yes. Right. And do you see the, would you see the murmurations, the big patterns they make in the week? Usually in the winter, they think we get that here, you see. Yes, I have uh, cousins up north that have sent me videos and 
photographs of them doing that, yes. Yeah, yeah. That is quite it's one of the most amazing things in nature, I think, to see that. So we get um, birds that come over from Europe for the winter to the mm -hmm. UK, and you, and we have a, a big roost on a uh, big reef beds about 20 miles from here mm. on this what they call the Somerset levels, and you'll get up to two to three million starlings in wow. a roost, and they all do those lovely patterns. That's amazing. Wow. <laughs> so there's Arnie again. You can see him. He's oh, the really. Him. I lost so we, 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 they're all that. Oh, you lost us. Yeah. Oh, from there. How's that? There we You're go. Back. Yeah. Uh, so um, all of our birds are hatched and bred in captivity. A bar mm -hmm. these guys who who nobody breeds them in captivity. So we've got a special license to get them from the wildest babies as long as we kept them all their lives. Oh, really? So uh, oh. they're quite unusual in that fact. I think, to my knowledge, they would be the only starlings probably anywhere in the UK or Europe just for what we do with them. So they're very, very special. <laughs> wow. They are very special. And they, you can tell they're comfortable with you for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, they love They're really bonded with us. You know, they, they, they are just sociable birds, as you know. Yeah. You and can see how they're running around. Yeah. You see, they love their, they look in the room. They're very nosy. <laughs> now, now, this, now, when we film with them, hold on, Rose, not yet. This is what most people are amazed at. Not what they do, but how quickly they go back in. <laughs> it goes you think they wouldn't want to, but... <laughs> <laughs> You've got to remember, these are their little night boxes and they feel very yeah. safe in when they roost wow. at night. Yeah. So when you travel with them, this is how you travel them and they're really happy and content. Then, secure. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And they're safe from predators at night because we have to be careful here. We yeah. wouldn't want to leave them down in their aviary oh. in the day, at night where they are in the day because you get um, weasels and, yeah. and stoats and things, you see, yeah. just in wow. case something got in and at them. Yeah. Um, wow. There, so there we are. So there's their fronts there. So anyway, there. <laughs> this has been so good, Lloyd. I, I, I'm glad we got the full look at, at, at your birds and your, your sanctuary, your place there. Um, <laughs> I will, I will be Rose. in touch with you. I hope Rose can come on board Friday for the kids at the school where I teach. Yes. Um, we, may, yeah. we may only be able to do half of what we've done today. This has been so special to me and my audience today. We're recording this. So we're going to, if you want a copy, but let me know. Um, Brilliant, yeah. And I'll send it to you. We're going to put it on my wife's YouTube and I'll cast it later because some people that are working couldn't see it but wanted to watch. Uh, but I think, see, Friday, just to go over um, we're going to call you one o'clock. Uh, your time will be what? It'll still be daylight. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, was it, was it 10 AM your time or 1 Maybe PM? Yeah. Right. 10 AM our time, I believe. Which yeah. is 3 PM here, which okay. is fine. Yes. I mean, now, do you, because you, because you want to do less time. So we concentrate on the flying birds for the kids okay, good, more good. so. No, yeah. oh, I know they would like to see it all, but you know, kids that as much as they're interested and they will be, believe me. Um, their yeah. attention span, like old people in a nursing home, is not as much <laughs> yeah. as, as you mean. So that's fine. So yeah. what I do is we'll concentrate on the owls, Bran, yeah. show Tilly, and Ooh. then come up for the starlings. How's okay. that? That sounds good, yeah. buddy. This has been so yeah. special. <laughs> we love you guys. Bye. Bye. You? All right. Bye. Have a good love day you. and send me the link uh, of anything that you're doing. Yeah, we'll do, and I'll and I'll see you Friday. Okay, we'll see you Friday. God Bye. bless. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.